Hello everyone and welcome to the next video in the series. In this video we're going to shift our focus and go back to the technical skills component of the program. In an earlier video we talked about the classification scheme for numbers and I introduced natural numbers, integers, rational numbers, real numbers and I'm not quite sure if I mentioned complex numbers. And in a subsequent video, we talked about the manner in which we work with uh, natural numbers, uh, how we read them formally, order them, add, subtract, multiply, and divide them. And we talked about how to work out expressions that have natural numbers in them. And now we are going to do the same for integers. Although I have divided the topics into, or the videos into smaller chunks, so that uh, each one focuses on one subtopic. And that way you can also go to the video, to the subtopic that is of interest to you very quickly. Uh, so the subtopic for this video is on the structure of integers. And to begin, let's take a look at some examples of, uh, of integers, like positive 4, there is negative 4, and there is 0. And of course, we all know the need for 0 and the positive numbers, which are basically natural numbers. And, uh, and we would like to talk about why is it that we introduced negative numbers. And in line with the theme of, of this series, which is what my work is all about, uh, all mathematical notation and algorithms arise as a result of our problem solving needs and therefore there must be some kind of a problem whose solution requires that we should have negative numbers and, and that's why we introduce them. Let's take a look at such a problem. Uh, so an example of this problem is uh, the following. The temperature was 2 degrees Celsius this morning. It dropped by 6 degrees Celsius. What is the temperature now? And we can visualize this on the right side if, uh, if we can imagine that this is our thermometer, that the temperature was 2 degrees Celsius this morning. So the top of the mercury column was uh, where, the, where, the, where 2 is here. And then it dropped by 6 degrees Celsius. So it went down by 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And so the top of the mercury column fell down to the tick that you see over here. And the problem is right now we have no notation to refer to that point. And we would like to be able to do so because it does make sense for the mercury column to fall to that point. <clears throat> now we could of course go ahead and solve the problem or attempt to solve the problem. We could say, uh, let's assume that T represents the value of temperature now in degrees Celsius. And then T will be 2 minus 6. 2 is the starting temperature. And then it went down by 6 degrees. But the problem again is that we have no way of writing the answer to this problem. And that's why we introduced the set of integers, which as you recall is the set that contains numbers such as negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, and so on. <clears throat> and with these numbers now we can we can improve on the reading of our thermometer by entering the numbers negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, and negative 4. And now we can we can answer the question that we had that the temperature now is negative 4 degrees Celsius. Okay, so this is the reason uh, that we had to introduce negative numbers, so that we can answer questions uh, similar to the problem that we just talked about. Now we would like to talk about the origin of the negative number, of the negative sign, and also the origin of the positive sign. Okay, so the origin of the negative sign. And for this, I'm going to start with a subtraction, let's say <coughs> 2 minus 6. And I'm going to display that uh, on the right side as well over here. Now, something very interesting about subtraction is that uh, you can add or subtract equal amounts from both of these numbers from the two operands, in this case 2 and 6. And the result of the subtraction will be the same. So let's say that uh, we add 3 units to 2 and 3 units to 6, and we end up with 5 minus 9. The answer is negative 4, which is the same as the answer to the problem 2 minus 6. In fact, this relationship is, uh, is one of direct superposition. That's one of the main class of problems that we come across, and, uh, and we will be talking about these kinds of problems in detail in the problem-solving skills component of the program. Uh, now, again, so you can add or, or subtract equal amounts to both of these operands, and the result will be the same. That in some ways makes sense, because if you think about uh, two quantities and they both go up and down by the same amount, then the difference between them does not change. 
and that's what we are talking about uh, if, if you increase both of these operands by the same amount or decrease them by the same amount then the difference between them stays the same now what we will do is we will uh, we will subtract two from both operands we subtract the first one from both uh, and the reason we do that is because we want to end up with zero as the first operand and the reason for that will become apparent pretty soon if we do that if we uh, in some ways if we like reduce the subtraction uh, by subtracting two from both operands then we end up with zero minus four and by the way i call this reduction because it's very similar to reduction of fractions where you can divide the top and the bottom by the same number in this case we are dealing with subtraction and you can subtract equal amounts from both operands and uh, and if you do so then uh, we get two minus two zero and six minus two becomes four and uh, you'll notice that by dropping zero, we'll, we can end up with the negative sign, uh, the notation for negative sign. And that's the reason why it's identical to the subtraction sign. And we are going to drop the zero very soon, but for now, I'm going to keep it. Okay, uh, so uh, just before I continue with the rest of the talk, let me also mention that this an understanding of this uh, reduction is important. Uh, also, because later on, uh, in, in a couple of videos ahead, I will be talking about the algorithm for, for doing subtractions like 2 minus 6. And you'll notice that the algorithm states that you can keep the negative sign <coughs> here and then subtract in reverse to 6 minus 2 and you get the 4. And the answer will be negative 4. All right, so we have a subtraction 2 minus 6 and then we have the reduced subtraction 0 minus 4. And uh, another thing that we can do now is we can use the notation 0 minus 4, which is the reduced subtraction, to label the point on the thermometer uh, where the temperature would be when it dropped by 6 degrees. And so we can say that this point will be labeled as 0 minus 4. And, uh, and this notation, you notice that it's very, very descriptive. Uh, it actually cannot be more clear. It says to get to this point, the point that we are talking about start with zero and then go down four units now how you do that is up to you but that's what they're talking about so it's it really pins it down uh, and uh, and uh, and so we can use zero minus four to label that point as well and we understand zero minus four not to not just to say uh, start with zero and then subtract four but also labels the point that you would arrive at the formal notation is like that, by the way. It always uses the notation for the operation to uh, pin down the point on the line that it's talking about. Now, because we agree that we always subtract the first operand from both, then the first operand will always become zero. Here is a second example of that. So if we have 12 minus 15, then we're going to reduce it by subtracting 12 from both operands. The first one becomes zero and the second one becomes three. And this is the associated reduced subtraction. And uh, in all cases, uh, the reduced subtraction begins with zero and it's followed by an indication as to how far below zero we go to get to the answer that we seek. We also see zero minus four. Uh, we, we assign to it the duty of representing the result of uh, subtractions like two minus six, which is what we just talked about here. And therefore we can represent that point as 0 minus 4. We can do the same for the other points that are an integral distance below 0 and then we'll end up with a much improved version of our thermometer which now says uh, in addition to 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 we also have 0 minus 1, 0 minus 2, 0 minus 3 and 0 minus 4. Okay, uh, the next topic is on the origin of the positive sign, which is pretty similar to the origin of the, of the negative sign with minor modifications. And to, to explain how uh, the positive sign comes about, let's uh, start with an addition, such as 3 plus 1. And let me also display that on the right side. So there we have it. Now, addition is similar to subtraction in that you can, you can play with the two numbers uh, that, uh, that figure in the addition. Uh, except uh, this time, in order to keep the sum identical, you can increase 3 by a certain amount, but then you have to decrease 1 by the same amount. So 1 goes up by 2, the other goes down by 2. And vice versa, you can subtract 2 from 3, and then you can add 2 to 1, and you get the same answer. So 
if I let's say subtracted uh, 2 from 3 I would get 1 and if I add 2 to 1 I get 3 and 1 plus 3 is also 4 you can uh, let's say add 4 to 3 to get 7 and then subtract 4 from 1 to get negative 3 and then when you add them you get 4 again and uh, what we do is we choose to uh, and by the way these are also uh, they correspond to a class of problems called inverse superposition problems uh, I'm not quite sure if uh, the earlier one I referred to it as direct proportion if I did so my apologies it's direct superposition and this one is inverse superposition and the uh, inverse superposition problems are problems where one quantity goes up by a certain amount the other one goes down by the same amount and they also are an important class of problems that we will be talking about uh, in the uh, problem solving skills component of the program now we would like uh, to end up with zero as the first operand and therefore what we do is we subtract three from three to get zero and then we add three to one to get four so our uh, sort of like a reduced uh, addition becomes zero plus four <clears throat> so we subtracted three from three and then we added three to one and we get zero plus four and we can drop the zero now and uh, refer to the result as positive four that explains why the positive sign notation is identical to the addition notation now with these notations, uh, what we can do now we can, we, is we can improve our, uh, our reading uh, on, the, on the thermometer and we can refer to the top point here as 0 plus 4. Again, you notice that the operation of addition is used, uh, the notation for the operation of addition is used to refer to this location. Basically what we say is if you start with 0 and then add 4 units, you get to this point. Just like subtraction. Uh, we always end up with 0 as the first operand for the reduced addition. So if I have 12 plus 15, I subtract 12 from 12 to get 0, and then I add 12 to 15 to get 27. And you notice that the first operand is 0 again. We can also represent the values of these other points between 0 and 0 plus 4 using the same notation. And that gives us uh, the, the thermometer that you see there. So once again, uh, uh, in, in the case of the reduced subtraction, we start with 0, and uh, we may think of 0 plus 4 as we can assign to it the duty of representing the result of additions like 3 plus 1. Now with this notation, uh, we could, by the way, also do the same with 0. We could uh, also call 0 as uh, referred to that point as either 0 plus 0 or 0 minus 0. In this case, it doesn't make a difference which one you pick. Okay, so with this notation, our uh, set of uh, integers would look like this. Now we have numbers like 0 minus 3, 0 minus 2, 0 minus 1, then either 0 plus 0 or 0 minus 0, then 0 plus 1, 0 plus 2, 0 plus 3, and so on. Now, uh, this notation is fine, except that it's a little bit too complicated to work with, and uh, we would like to simplify it if we can. And this can be done. Uh, let me move this thermometer to the left a bit. Okay, there we have it. Now, the first simplification that we introduce is to drop the zero because it's always zero and we can assume that it's there if you like. So now we have the following thermometer. And, uh, and the next thing that we do to simplify notation is to drop the positive sign. Uh, we could agree that if there is nothing written down, then it means positive. And that way we can come up with even a, a better shorthand for writing these numbers down. In addition, we're going to drop both the plus and the minus. And in fact, we disallow them. We're going to agree that positive sign indicates that you are above zero and negative sign means you are below zero. And because zero is not above zero, it's not positive. And because zero is not below zero, it's not negative. And therefore, for zero, we just uh, write down zero. Uh, our, our notation now becomes much, much simpler, which is the one that you are familiar with. But please do keep in mind that 4 comes from 0 plus 4, which is the very official notation that we use to represent an integer with. Uh, this equivalence is also important later on when we solve equations, uh, and we can, uh, we can start the leading term with 0 plus. With the simplified notation, now we have the following set. Z is the set that contains the numbers negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, and so on. Okay, everyone, uh, thank you very much for watching this video. In the next few videos, I will be talking about uh, addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, uh, formal reading of integers, ordering them, and also uh, the manner in which we 
uh, evaluate expressions that have integers in them. And until then, I will be gone in three, two, one.